Um, I'd say yeah. Why not? That'd be more interesting, right? Bro. For for you guys and for me. Well, for time's sake, I don't know if everyone can finish that. Ah. Yeah. So this is two point. Over what? Yeah. We're gonna do some. I was just. I wanted to show you a little value stuff, and then I was gonna do some like theory stuff like that too. Get confused because two point perspective, like my horizon line is going to be like way up there, but at the same time, I'm trying to like focus on the walls, so then I got to like make sure my points are in the middle of the wall. So that's, that's got to make sure you're on point. Ah. I thought you would like that. Okay. So remember in two point you're just picking which point all the horizontals go to, right? So Setting up the room, right? Pretty simple. And then you can get as detailed as you want. You can find what I like. What I like to do is set out um, the ground plane of objects, like these little extra tabaret things, first, and then move them up to where they should be. Do landscapes on the side? Um, I haven't really had a chance to do that. It's a little... I want to do it well. It's a little hard to do well when you have to take all this gear outside and things like that. So. I just haven't gotten to. Do you mean the speaker boxes? All those remote speaker boxes. Yeah. They're the little tabaret type things. So now that that's there. I had an 18 in my car. About 3,000 watt amp. Just to show you, don't you don't have to start with the ground plane. You can start with any any plane that you want. trick is just keeping vanishing points in mind. Anyway, that looks a little better. So I'm gonna raise the I'm gonna raise the height of these. Bring that to bring these in line with this. But I like this proportion better. Is it safe to say that we're going to use vanishing points, uh, the two point perspective on everything from the ceiling and the uh, floor? Unless you're in. Just eyeball? Um, I'm not really eyeballing, I'm kind of like, like taking. All pictures. horizontal lines, right? Horizontal or vertical across the page, everywhere, as long as it meets our. Mm -hmm. So in two point, all your verticals stay vertical. In one point, all your verticals stay vertical. 
In two point, all your horizontals go to one point or the other. In one point, uh, line of sight, anything that parallels the line of sight is going to go to the vanishing point. Anything that does not, does not go to the vanishing point. So like, I think of it as, you know, parallel to line of sight, parallel to shoulders. Because it is, it is about the, the phys, like the setup of physical space, right? So, um, what does that look? Okay. So the value. Um, remember the rule of thumb for values on structure. There's a shift in plane. There's a shift in value. Yes. Remember that. So. Here, you know logically that planes shift. So when you get to the value, you know for a fact that the value has to change every time the plane shifts. And all you have to do is decide how that happens, right? Like I see this plane as being darker than this plane. This actually has a has a, a, li a light right here, so you can see that that's got a funky little bright spot according to the light. See how it goes along with the perspective. Like if you drop that down. You see where the light spot is? And then here, the top is darker. But then this is much lighter because of the way that the lines are going. And in here, this is pretty dark. Eliminating a lot of the detail in there, but you get the idea, right? You can also change directions of the marks to follow the direction of the plane. Now I've got this window, right? Which has blinds in it. So rather than drawing each individual blind first, I can do the shadows of the framework of the windows. Then the whole the thing is a hole. I mean, you got a little so there's nothing that says you can't be loose with a linear perspective drawing. Most people don't like linear perspective because they feel like it's you know uh, a little uptight. But it doesn't have to be that way. You don't. Know? It just depends on how you treat it. And this is lighter. You 
Are you going to draw any of the flags? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if it's like re really necessary. It might be. I think you shouldn't do this just need to. One half of the lamp is dead. So that should get dark. Um, here you see the shadow go like this. Inside the tab right. Here. And you see that over here too. It's just a French word for small table. Tabaret. Art term. Would you call those tables or shelves? These things that I'm drawing right now, these are tabarets. So this side is darker than the top, right? And then the tops of the of these are more stained. So it kind of reverses. Which is a little weird. Seam there. So you're starting to get to like a value plan that's related to each plane, right? And as you and once it's all kind of there, you can come back and, and clean it up however you like. And you can be loose with it and create kind of a uh, like a moving drawing, or you can be tight with it and get like this still architectural feel. It just depends on where you wanna, where you wanna take it, and how you wanna take it there. So that this right here is an example of form-following marks, marks that go with the direction. See the vanishing points over there and my marks are going there. You can do that to emphasize form, right? So here, for this, the vanishing point's here. So the marks can seem to bend to that vanishing point. <coughs> emphasizing that. Yeah, it's pretty fun. I can tell you don't know what's up. What's that? So well, I just want you guys to see. Like, keep going, go. I can go. You're saying you don't want to stop. You can, I mean, you can take it as far as you want. Right? It reminds me of a ghost dimension. Uh, I've seen that one. And then you'll see cast shadows, right? And cast shadows have to feel like they go along whatever surface. So I see one coming out of here. You guys see that? Yep. Mm -hmm. So. What you want to do is figure out where that intersects over here, and then you can bring it up, bring it out, just by connecting dots. And then the cast shadow is on two different planes, so it has to have two different values. How would you do the floors? The floors? Um, I mean, if I were going to sit here all day, I'd actually put in this like hutch, and that would give me a lot less floor to deal with. But you know, you would eliminate stains and look for more cast shadows, right? Like the uh, like the computer desk is going to be, you know, if I put it in, it's. It would get really, really kind of distorted, but it would go. out to about here, right? Up a little more. 
So that would give me a lot less flood to deal with. Now it's hard to, to look over the desk initially and then be in line. Really? For me it is. Because it's like in the middle of everything. Well, you got to practice and use your imagination, right? Like you can take this back baseboard, right? Mm -hmm. And just continue that line and find where it meets that vertical and then continue it back down. So. Somewhere in there. What do you do with like curves? What's that? Curves. I was trying to draw the sofa out there and the arm is like curves, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, let's pretend this was like a, um, we'll pretend this, this right here is like a curved desk surface. I'm not straight. You know how they do that? They do like the corporate curve on desks. So the first thing, you kind of get everything working. So get that. What you can do is round out, but still stay in perspective, right? Kind of like how we were doing with the structural stuff. So the outer plane would probably have to come in a little bit. Um, you know, think of it as additive or subtractive. Here I had to add a curve. Here I had to subtract out the curve because the corner is further out. Same here. So the curve is uh, has to subtract from that outer edge, and the outer edge comes in a little bit. Same here, right? And then you know you'll have one value coming this way, right? Say this is darker. Then you have a lighter value coming this way. And then because it's a curve, you don't have that like harsh line there, but you, you so you have some kind of value transition between them. And you'd want to smooth out that transition. So it's not that harsh edge. So. Is it better to start how you did? Like, is that the process of drawing a whole corner right there? Um, because that like how he was saying? Yeah. It's tough for him to draw the desk and all the, uh, the boxes draw through. around it. So, yeah. So I, the background first and then yeah. the lap everything else? I like to do that. Um, just because now I understand this ground plane and where all this stuff is. And then I can place this in in such a way that it doesn't mess me up. Like I know that because of this ground plane and this and these, that these don't intersect or overlap in any weird ways. You know how you play like um, like an old video game sometimes, and there's like a desk that goes through the wall. Like, that's actually a common error in linear perspective. Is that you know like something will go through a wall. It'll look like it's whole because they've drew the surface, but the back is actually going into the wall. I'll show you what I mean. Like if I take one, of, if I took like a uh, another one of these tabarets and put it over here, right? I could put it down here, you know, draw it back to the vanishing point for a while. get something weird, you know. But if something were like obscuring that corner, right? That throws it off. Like if there's, you know, a beach ball or something in the way. Like you wouldn't necessarily notice that that goes through the wall. You see what I mean? So when I draw, when I complete out the ground plane, that shows me that I've gone through the wall with that object. 
I and this that, is a super. Remember, I did that with a column and drawing one. Yeah, I remember that. There was a column that I was drawing in another building. Yeah. And I didn't get it until he showed me that if you complete the circle, the circle went through the, was behind the wall. Yeah. And it was wrong. It was really a full cylinder in front of the wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like she had done an engaged column where it comes out from the wall. It was, and it was next to a couch, so it was like that. confusing to draw. She had drawn a, a half column. Whereas there, it was an actual column fully in front of the wall. So because if you don't draw that face up, you don't necessarily know. So you wouldn't want to create a situation where this desk is like inside those other tabs or something. Like that. So that's why you kind of go back to back to front. And you know this value right here is drawn like through this, but it's just going to become like part of the front of this thing. In the end. It's trying to draw a front of that. Yeah. I think it's because we don't want to have to draw the. Oh, draw over. Draw. What well, we already drew. Yeah, well, that, right. That's yeah. true. <laughs> and we also. Yeah, don't, yeah. yeah, we don't like to waste our time, I think. We're like, well, we <laughs> see it as a waste of time. <laughs> yeah. That's there's fine. shortcuts that seem like shortcuts, and then there's like stuff that seems long, but it's actually saving you time in the end. So, a lot of, a lot of the stuff about the practice that we do goes in like la in a, in a layering system. And if you're uncomfortable with layering, like you want everything to be right the first time, then you know you have you have a rough time with it. I think that when we look at something straight on, I think that our mind is seeing converting it to black, like one D or something. So for me, it's hard to pop it forward to make the desk to come yeah, look at like it. bring that desk out into the room. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm trying to push it back and think paper flat, mm -hmm. but when you do that, you can end up putting something through the wall. Yeah, exactly. So I wouldn't want to do. I wouldn't want to start drawing the rest of the desk here first. You know what I mean? I wouldn't want to start there. I'd, I'd go down here, finish out this ground plane, and then I would want to put the desk in from the bottom up 